Welcome to the Solid Game University channel. This video's topic is pocket recognition. So the pocket recognition toolpath is uh, another one of our recognition toolpaths where you basically choose the solid as your geometry, and then the toolpath will determine the features of the model that need to be machined in that particular toolpath. In this case, pocketing geometry, or, or basically just any kind of uh, blind pocket or a through pocket. So let's see how that works. <laughs> I'm just going to go to add milling operation, pocket recognition. The best way to think of how pocket recognition works is it's basically a recognition pocketing toolpath. Kind of sounds dumb to reverse the words like that, but that's essentially what it does. Instead of choosing pocketing geometries, it will recognize the edges of the solid to determine what a pocket is. Open pocket, through pocket, whatever it is. And we'll start by just choosing geometry. And again, we have the same sort of option here. We have different options here to choose the geometry, but essentially it's a recognition toolpath. We want to try and take advantage of that. So I'm just going to say solid body and let it find all those pockets for me. So you can see in the selection list, it found all kinds of different faces. And if I click on them, it'll highlight which ones are which. And there's actually just the chain representing that through hole. So there really is no floor to that pocket, but it recognizes it as a through pocket. So just click the green check mark to accept that. And in the edit geometry, there's a few things we can do here, but the one that's kind of more important to look at is right here, the exclude top faces. So let's say you don't want to do the top face as a pocket. Essentially, it is an open pocket, but you could do it with a facing operation probably just as easy or even easier than a pocketing operation. So you could actually check this box, and it'll just uncheck the box next to the face that represents the top face. So you don't actually have to do that as an open pocket. But we'll just leave that in there, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what that actually means when you do that. Uh, and then likewise, for the through pocket, it's going to look at this solid and take all the upper levels and lower levels of each individual pocket right from the solid. But for a through pocket, there really is no lower level. It goes through the part. If I leave this through pocket data or delta as zero, it's going to go right to this back face. That's the only definition it has for the depth of this pocket. If I put any other value in here, let's say negative, and for the sake of visuals, I'm just going to say negative half inch, then I'm telling it it can actually extend past the bottom of this pocket, the through pocket face basically, uh, by half inch. So we're going to see what that does later on. Let me just click the green check mark. Let's go to tool, and I'm just going to select the tool from my tool library, in this case, a half inch flat end mill. It is still a pocketing toolpath, so under the data tab, you still have to put in your fees and speeds. Under levels, it's a recognition toolpath, so it's really going to just look at all the different pockets, all the different levels. Uh, but we still have to tell it what the upper level is, because in a, in a sense, this pocket still has a top level. So I'm going to set it to zero. You'll see the lower levels grayed out. Again, we could just basically tell it to go through the entire part, and whatever it sees is what it'll machine. Equal step down is the same as before. There's my step down assignment, but I'm actually just going to tell it to equalize that through the whole part. So whatever depth it recognizes, it's just going to equalize it for each pocket. In addition to that, we have adaptive step down. So you see this option usually in the recognition toolpath. Um, if there's any feature along here that falls in between the, the, the 250, let's say one of these steps here, it's, it's actually just going to add an additional pass just to machine that, that face that fell in between the 250 step. Under technology, there's nothing different here. This is basically all the same stuff you saw in the pocketing toolpath. Technology types, overlaps, wall offset, floor offset, wall and floor. Go to the contour tab, same sort of controls you see in the pocketing toolpath. If there's an open pocket, what to do about that. In this case, I'll just say approach from outside and so forth. And then link, same as before. In this case, it could do a helical entry or it can do all the other usual ones you see in the pocketing toolpath. So let's do a save and calculate on that. Okay, you can already see one thing going on. It already excluded the top face, even though in my geometry, I didn't check that box. That's again, because just like other recognition toolpaths in the level section, I told it to start at Z0, which is literally that top face there. So because I told it to only look from Z0 down, it didn't notice that there was some material left on the top face. So I'm actually just going to add some material there, or in this case, tell it to look at a envelope that starts above that top face. And when I do a save and calculate, 
it now includes that top face. It does it almost like an open pocket. Likewise, when I tilt this around, you can see that I poked through the bottom of that through pocket by half inch. Okay, so that's because I told it to just start from Z0 and look down as far as it can go. And in this case, the through pocket, I told it to extend the geometry by half inch. But if I want to limit the travel of this tool, it's just like any other recognition toolpath. I'll just say lower level. And let's say the lower level is the bottom of the part, literally the bottom of the part. Now, I have an actual finite envelope to work within. When I do a same and calculate, it basically stops at that face right there. Okay, so it's a recognition toolpath, but you control exactly how much of the part it looks at. Let me just move this over. Okay, now if there's anything on here that you in particular didn't want to machine, just like any other modified geometry when there's a list of, of items, let's say that through pocket, I don't intend to actually do that with this, uh, this tool. I just check the box there and it actually excludes it from the calculation. Okay. So recognition geometry, but still you have control over exactly what it does. Now let's say we take a look at the toolpath. With the half inch end mill, it's not fitting in between this little boss here and the wall. So just like other pocketing toolpaths, we can actually do a rest operation. So I'll just do a save and copy. Everything's the same. I'm just going to change the tool to the smaller diameter tool. In this case, a quarter inch end mill. Under technology, rest material, we're just going to change that to rest. That opens up the rest tab, and we just give it the information. So previous tool diameter, everything else was set to zero. I'm just going to do a save and calculate. And I'll turn off that tool path. We can see basically the corners and obviously in between the boss there. So just like every other pocketing toolpath, this one operates the same way. It has the same sort of contour parameters, hatch parameters, rest material parameters. The only thing really different you're doing here in terms of difference between pocket and pocket recognition is the geometry. It's automatically finding those pockets for you and the limits. In this case, you don't have to actually individually choose the lower, upper level and lower level of each pocket geometry. It found that geometry for you and it analyzed the upper level and lower levels as well. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.